Hello everyone and welcome to our webinar this afternoon. We have a large number of people registered, so it should be of great interest. And I'd like to thank Shane Raftree from uh, Fulch Ireland, um, who's been involved in craft and tourism for a number of years now and has been working with many um, craft and design enterprises. And he has kindly uh, recorded this uh, session with us and he is in our audience uh, today. So what I would like everyone to do is if they have questions during the presentation is to put them in the Q&A and we will deal with them at the end of the presentation or for more complex ones, these will be uh, forwarded on to DCCY and Fulch Ireland um, executives. Now we have had a couple of very in-depth and meaningful emails uh, prior to today's session. I'd like to thank people for those. And if they feel that it's not comprehensively dealt with this afternoon, they will be at a later date. So with that, I'd like to welcome you all and off we go. Thank you. Hello there. My name is Shane Raftree and I work in Fulch, Ireland. I've been working with craft businesses for the last number of years. Some of these have been from craft trails to retail shops, from potters to jewellers, big and small, throughout the region. The purpose of today's presentation is to reflect on where we were at craft, and craft tourism, and how we can plan to return to that level. Firstly, focusing on the domestic visitor for the immediate future, and then over the next two to three years to the overseas market. In this presentation, I will share with you Fort Ireland's recent consumer research, then talk about opening your business and things that you should focus on. And then I'm going to finish the presentation bring you to the Fort Ireland COVID-19 Support Zone. If you have any questions, my email address is on the last slide. So in 2018, Fort Ireland conducted craft research. We were conducted by a craft specialist focusing on national and international craft visitor experiences. There was 15 craft uh, experiences that were mystery shopped. And what it did was, it was identify best practices in Ireland's ancient East, Ireland and the world. They established key characteristics of effective trails and powerful craft tourism experiences. Some key findings from the research Craft retail experiences have a broad appeal, especially the culture curious market segment. It also can help to attract social energizers who are looking for new experiences, which involve a strong collaborative learning event, and also has potential to attract high budget solo travelers for multi night stays. More information on these market segments are on the Fulch Ireland website. The report found that tourists also value products that reflect local history and traditions. Tourists also value the opportunity to take away memories of a place and the opportunities to meet and engage with the makers. Products made from locally sourced materials, which are perceived to be authentic. And finally, the sense of, that buying a local artist's work supports the local community. Consumer research shows that visitors are interested in craft experiences and buying authentic Irish products. 85% of overseas holidaymakers see interesting history and culture as an important element of their trip to the further. Fulch Ireland suggests that visitors spend, on average, 12% of the budget on shopping. And 8% of visitors rate attractive cities and towns as significant. So engaged visitors will spend. Targeted marketing and planning will reap dividends for your business. A good craft tourism experience helps visitors to spend more and stay longer. But it should never be just a transaction. Visitors get to witness creativity in action, watching, chatting to, and even learning from people who's proud of and inspired by where they live. They encounter objects and practices that shed Light on people and places, history and change, traditions and innovation. They get to touch and take ownership of meaningful objects 
that brings them joy and carries a strong sense of place and stories with them. They elate and engage consumers, giving them a chance to interact with communities, participate in a vibrant culture and experience delight. Following on from this research, our aim was to encourage design and craft people and their business to engage and contribute to the development of their craft experience by having a better understanding of the international visitor and their needs and wants, and ultimately increasing the number of visitors and their potential spread to the region. So we focus on building world-class visitor experiences. So how's that done? Developing and supporting growth in craft visitor experiences that bring the local region and Ireland's entities to life. Identifying craft experiences with significant tourism growth potential and creating new sale of ex experiences to bring to Mehel and I2A. These are overseas, international overseas buyers that bring visitors to Ireland. Using information from the research, workshops were developed based on the information for developing great craft visitor experiences within the region. We engaged with over 110 craft businesses. We delivered four craft visitor experience workshops in Kilkenny, Port Leash, Wexford and Cavan. We delivered business supports to some of these businesses, such as one-to-one -one mentoring, story development, scripting, pricing and packaging, routes to market, just to name a few. We also developed and launched a craft business toolkit. One of the case studies in the toolkit is based on SharePoint Glass. We met Rory at one of our workshops and he told us about his idea of having a glass blowing experience for visitors because they're very much just making glass for retail and for selling. So they wanted to get into the visitor experience. Based on that, we worked with them, delivering one-to-one -one mentoring, development of the story and scripting of the business, development of a range of saleable visitor experiences from a basic guided glass blowing tour to a premium experience of blowing your own piece of glass. We also helped with pricing packaging, developing a sales and marketing plan, and supported their attendance at Mehel and I2A, which are overseas um, platforms for international buyers. This is now linked with hotels such as Mount Juliet, who promote their premium saleable experience. They also have now secured further funding to develop their visitor experience, glass blowing space, and updating their website. They experienced an increase in visitor numbers and revenue spent in 2019. We also have a lovely short video on Gerbite Glass, linking it to tourism, storytelling and craft. And that's located on the Ireland's Entities website. If you Google Gerbite Glass and Ireland's Entities, you'll find the video there. Tapping into tourism, a toolkit for craft people and craft businesses. This toolkit was developed and launched in early 2019 to assist craft people and craft businesses who want to get more out of tourism, meaning more visitors to their workshop, more sales to these tours, and raising your profile further afield. It contains information about types of tourists, ideas for improving your experience you offer to the tourist, and the ways you can market them, and examples of international craft tourism best practice. There are case studies, top tips, checklists, and further sources of support. And this toolkit is relevant to no matter what part of Ireland you're in, not just Ireland's ancient East. So the craft tourism space now, where do you fit in? Are there new opportunities for you? Are you promoting and cross-selling your business, your region, your networks, trails? What are your plans to engage with the domestic market? What are your plans longer term for the overseas markets? Businesses will begin to open later this year and for the next 12 to 18 months will be mainly focused on the domestic market. 
for the overseas visitors plan for the future. It'll be two to three years for these markets to return. What does the current research tell us about consumers? Falter Ireland's Consumer Planning and Insights Division carried out research in April with consumers on where they were under COVID-19. What are we being told? As restrictions extend, frustration and anxiety are core emotions, but so too is optimism. Upcoming weeks will be critical in the dynamic of emotions. With news such as Ireland's surge being potentially mitigated, and with some progressive easing of restrictions here in Ireland and Europe, expectations will be constantly evolving. Frustrations may turn into anger if messaging isn't aligned. Normality is expected to return towards the end of the year. 61% of people believe normality will return in between three to nine months' time. Few believe this will happen within the next three months. What normal represents is difficult for people to articulate. Reassurance is needed that the current sacrifices being made will be worthwhile. Travel is high on the agenda once life resumes. Physically reconnecting with family and friends is the key driver once restrictions fall. Once this higher order need is satisfied, people will look to treat themselves, to shop, to eat out, and to travel or go on holidays. Social restrictions will have a role here. Limitations in where people can go on holiday may dampen excitement. With growing acceptance that there will be no swift recovery from the pandemic, majority believe normality won't return until the latter stages of this year. And you can see from the graph here how people responded. Once normality returns, there is a clear desire to fulfill the fundamental needs of human connection, to re-engage with everyday behaviours, but also to escape, to have a holiday, and to travel. And we can see the respondents here talked about family, friends, holiday, eating out, shopping, visiting, has been high for them. Unsurprisingly, the public are experiencing a broad spectrum of emotions from frustration, anxiety, helplessness. But there's also a sense of optimism. Negative emotions are yet to manifest into anger, signaling a level of understanding and acceptance of the situation. Even after the announcement of the extension restrictions after the Easter weekend. So now on to the big challenge. What do we need to do to reopen? We need to plan. So some key considerations for reopening your business. Review and implement published guidance from government on reopening of businesses when they're available. Develop a broad plan for opening based on a phased-based system. Be fully aware and compliant on current government and HSC guidelines on COVID-19. Plan the health and safety protocols for your business. Prioritize the safety and well-being of your staff, customers and yourself. Develop a staff training program for staff returning to the roles as well as being on the job. Carry out a health and safety assessment of your premises. For example, a visitor customer flow. Plan for the implementation of rigorous social distancing protocols in your premises. Plan the maximum customer capacity in your premises at any one time and details on how these are to be monitored. Review the size of your premises and consider removing some fixtures to make necessary space for your customers. Decide on how transactions are to be made. Prioritizing contactless payments. Install sneeze guards where necessary. Deliver ongoing training to staff pre-returning and on the job. Install hand 
sanitizing stations for your staff and your customers. And now to prioritize your staff and your customers. Display signage at the entrance and throughout your premises to reassure customers that you're rigorously implementing the HSE protocol and guidelines. Implement COVID-19 frontline staff e-training. Provide PPE required for all staff where necessary. Install hand sanitizing stations for staff and for customers. Thermal infrared readers at entrances for staff and customers may be required. When open, listen to, reassure and respond to your staff and your customers so that you'll have the best operational protocols in place and this will help reassure everyone. Over the last couple of slides, we've been talking about checklists and get ready for opening. Forge Ireland is working with key sectors, such as accommodation providers, attractions, activities, restaurants, etc., to develop detailed sector-specific operational guidelines, and these will be approved by the HSE. Attraction guidelines will be very informative for their businesses. In line with the guidelines, we'll be launching online training for all tourism employees on how to keep themselves and their customers safe. We'll also be launching a charter or stamp to reassure customers and employees that tourism products are safe. And we'll be communicating this as part of our domestic marketing campaign. Have you reviewed and analyzed your e-commerce? We now know that people's shopping behaviors have changed. How are you keeping your brand alive? Have you reviewed your B2C or your business to consumer plans? How are you enticing customers to your social media channels? Are the products and services that you offer easily purchasable? Are the virtual stores linked? For example, if you use Shopify for your website e-commerce, is it synced to your Facebook store? Do you have a customer service plan in place? Are you uploading product photos and short videos to reach your followers and your digital window shoppers alike? Is it easy to contact you as a customer? Forge Ireland is committed to supporting Ireland's tourism and hospitality industry, business owners and the wider tourism community as you work to navigate the COVID-19 situation together. This crisis is affecting every tourism business in the country and the road ahead is uncertain. Forge Ireland's COVID-19 Business Support Hub was created to provide the tourism and hospitality industry with a suite of business supports updates in government news and COVID-19 schemes, as well as expert advice and guidance. There are expert webinars and guides focused on areas such as managing cash flow and insurance, dealing with financial institutions, employee wellbeing, HR payments, and operational guidance. These supports are being continuously updated and shaped following ongoing industry engagement. This industry feedback is also helping to shape government supports and interventions. If you go on to the Fall Charlotte website, you'll see the current suite of supports from business liquidity to jump starting sales to operational guidance to brand reputation and employee well being. The next phase of supports will focus on supporting businesses to prepare for reopening. Examples include financial recovery, operational management, and sales and marketing. Access free supports and get regular updates at covid19.fallcharland.ie. This concludes my presentation on craft and tourism. If you require any further information, my email address is shane.raftery at forgeireland.ie.
Thank you for your time. Thank you, everyone. And uh, I hope you enjoy that. Um, I just wonder if I could look at a number of in-depth ones, and I think the best bet is for us to collate these and uh, see where we can take it from there. Um, I've got a question here about insurance implications of opening craft workshops to tourists uh, taking into account uh, post-COVID conditions. Now, that's a very uh, pertinent one. And I was thinking down the line, uh, just before everybody's about to open up, that I would get someone in the insurance field to talk to us on one of these uh, webinar afternoons. I think it'd be very beneficial. Um, what I have is uh, people who are asking about the craft uh, toolkit, and I will ensure that that gets uh, sent on to you. And there's also a question about uh, price points uh, that are, are feasible. I presume that you're thinking about uh, the, the uh, best way to uh, approach it after COVID because price points may have changed. So with that, um, I'd like to thank Shane for giving us the information today and thank all of you for joining us. We will collate these questions and we will get comprehensive answers and then return to you. Thank you so much. Thank you.